Dave and Dave. A podcast in your face. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dave and Dave. A podcast in your face. Podcast where we talk about what's going on in the world and if you like what that is and where you can find more. I already messed it up. If you like what that is, how you can find more in graphic audio. Uh, this week, we're talking about football, uh, specifically that super thing we're not allowed to mention by name. Do we ever figure out if we can say that? Pretty sure you can. I don't know, but like there's this bowl in my house and it has a cape on it. It is super. I'm going to say that. <laughs> the superb owl? The, yeah. The super bowl. Yeah. The super bowls. Which showing is I'm how none of our teams are in this game. Uh, I think that's us. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool with it. Uh, we can talk about that. It's a good, uh, what, teams. We got Steelers. Eh? Eh? Go Bills. Go Bills. Mm-hmm. I, the, I don't have a team. Parrots? <laughs> 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 no team for well, you. Who's uh, playing yeah. in this? Super- who? No, don't say it. Who's playing in this exhibition? In this exhibition. Oh, shoot. I'll, I'll just bleep it out. I'll bleep it out. I'll be with the Los Angeles Lambs and um, who was the other team? Oh, shoot. The Cats. Oh, right. Yeah. The Kittens? The Kittens. What are they called? There's, they have a name. Yeah. The uh, oh, Hamilton the- Tiger Cats. The Hamilton That's Tiger That's who they're playing. Cats. We can talk about the Bengals a little bit. They haven't won a playoff game since 1990. Yeah, when they were the Bungles or the Bagels or whatever. I, you know, I have a lot of friends. So I have some friends from Cincy, so I have to say, like, my hat's off to them. They've suffered long enough. They have suffered yeah. long enough. Mm-hmm. Oh, we should. All, we I, should I wouldn't know anything about that. MJ, what's up, Cream Circle? Oh yeah, this is <laughs> yeah. So this week we have a guest, Michael John Casey, MJ Casey, MJ Casey. How do you want MJ Casey? MG? MJ MJ Casey. He directed Galactic Football League. Uh, it's a book in graphic audio, and it's about. Football and aliens. Eight hundred years in the future. Eight hundred. Yeah, years there's in the a future. lot of like politics and other, and you know, commentary along how kind of how like sports reflects a lot of our common day problems with politics and and racial divides and all that kind of stuff. But it's just taken out at the you know, it's on the micro level in sports, but it's the macro level that it's in the universe with other uh, species and you know other political and criminal elements. A lot of fun. That was one thing I noticed uh, from the beginning. I mean, there's the growth of the main character, right? You see a lot of parallels there where he's he's overcoming his racism and it's sort of embedded in him from, you know, where he came from and all of that. Yeah, he doesn't want to talk to some of his teammates. I mean, some of this stuff, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's really interesting. I I spoke with the author, uh, Scott Sigler, who has a colossal amount of work out there. But, like, his football acumen is spot on because his dad was a coach. Yeah. And so some of his earliest memories as a kid were, like, you know, watching game films with his old man. And so, he, and, um, sadly, he's not with us here on the podcast, but he is a Lions fan. Talk about long-suffering. Oh, man. Yeah, Ooh, it's got to be even worse this year, I know, because, right? yeah, because Stafford's in it. But um, right. he has, like, this uh, definitely serious amount of football acumen. So, like, when I, I was going through the book and to adapt into the script, there was stuff I was looking up. It was a lot of it was just all straight up football talk. And that was going to be my question, because as someone that doesn't know a lot about football, there was there was a lot in there that was sort of eye opening as far as like what the quarterback's doing when they're reading a play and how the team practices and how they prepare for games that it seemed like it's not something you know, unless you're a serious sports junkie, it's not something that you're just going to know, right? So I was curious, did he, you know, talk to teams, talk to quarterbacks? But I guess his, no, you know, he, his father being a coach sort of explains a lot of that. I don't know if he did any research while he was writing it, but he had a lot of information going in just from like him just growing up around football all his life. And he was a bit of a, um, he was a bit of a jock himself. Uh, and he played a, a couple of sports, I believe, but like he, he was just always into stories. So. How did you grow up with football? I mean, that was one thing we wanted to tie in. Like, we want to talk about, you know, how we got introduced to it. I mean, I've been a Steelers fan all my life, right? Like, my grandfather worked in the steel mills in Pittsburgh. My dad was born and raised in Pittsburgh. And, you know, since I was a kid, it's always been Pittsburgh sports, right? Like, I have all these memories of, you know, we lived in Minnesota for a while. And, you know, we'd go to, there was a Steelers sports bar there. And, we you know, we'd go and watch them play. I remember watching the uh, superb owl, the thing we're not allowed to mention, um, you know, with, with my dad in some big hall when they made it in Massachusetts. And, 
Um, so what about you, MJ? You know, how, how did you grow up with well, football? What got uh, you started? My, my dad had been like a basketball coach before he was in the military. And so when I grew up, we had, and my parents, um, my, when my dad was moving around the car, the, he was re- moving around the uh, planet with his early family when he was stationed around the country, or excuse me, different countries. He, um, when they all came back to the States, and that's when my, some of my, me and my elder siblings were born, we all, pl- I was the only one who played baseball, but everyone else played soccer. Because that was like, because growing up, we just come from Europe, and like, there wasn't any American football being played in our household. But, you know, whatever, one summer, or excuse me, one uh, one Sunday, I turn it on, I see the Bills playing, because I grew up in western New York, and I don't know, it was just, I was hooked, like, my brother is kind of a fan. He watches games. My my uh, middle of my three older sisters is a diehard Bills fan. And so she and I kind of like were just, you know, from the jump, like as soon as I, I think one of my earliest memories is I went to go to an autograph signing uh, of Joe Cribs and Reggie McKenzie for those Bill fans out there who know who I'm talking about. Uh, I'm, I must have been, God, I must have been like a third or fourth grade, but I was like, I had to go. I had, if it had bills, I had to be there. And my father was never a huge football guy. And so it was kind of odd that like, you know, out of nowhere, me and one of my siblings were just like diehard Bills fans. And so we grew up in the Rochester area and that's where it came from. Yeah. Dave, you mentioned that, right? Like the, you know, sometimes a team just picks you, right? Like it's not always, it's not always a choice. Absolutely. You know, uh, like you said, like some people have that thrust upon them for because of uh, who their parents were, you know. And uh, growing up in Tampa, guess what? There's a Steelers bar in every town. Yeah, there um, is. A, <laughs> there is, man. There's there's not a lot of Bucks bars anywhere. I remember for years. I mean, I grew up grew up in Tampa, uh, but yeah, after moving around the country, going in on a Sunday, someplace that has a Sunday ticket, a hundred you know TVs, and going. Um, can you put just one of them on the Bucks game because <laughs> just just one? <laughs> and they're like, I don't know, man. We got I got to go talk to the manager. No one wants to watch that crap. Um, I grew up uh, listening to the games on the radio with my dad on Sundays because they were blacked out, even in Tampa, because they had this rule where if you didn't sell out yeah, a certain percentage of the attendance of the stadium, yeah. Did they do that in the Buffalo, or is that yeah, but, not a well, thing? I mean, were there enough it was a fans? thing where, like, if they were worried they were gonna, if they, did, you know, they had that cutoff date. Like, if they didn't sell it by a certain day, then it was automatically blacked out. Um, I remember right. driving just outside of the whatever it was radius of miles that you could see the game, like going to Syracuse because it's just up the, it's just up the New York State Thruway, like what an hour, and I could go there and see a yeah. game on a big screen because I couldn't, you know. But I've been to games, uh, especially like. Um, wild ones and it was like there's nothing nothing i mean people say like you know uh going to a live sporting event is um is unparalleled and i think it depends on what level Uh, you're going to and what sport you're going to but to go to any nfl game is just awesome it's just awesome uh the one of the divisional championships they won uh they played against the Miami Dolphins in the 90s, and it was the first time or maybe the second time that they tore down the goalpost after the game. And uh, I was at that game, and uh, mm-hmm. my one of my friends, their family had season tickets on the 40-yard line, or excuse me, 50-yard line for decades, you know. And so they're like, hey, uh, game's starting to end. It's clear we're going to win. Like, people start bleeding onto the field. And I just turned to my friend who got me this ticket, and I looked at him and I said, you know, if I get arrested, call my parents. It's just a misdemeanor. And I took off running. And I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm on the field. I'm running down there. I'm like, everyone's screaming. And at one point, I just turned to some random guy. And we grabbed each other by the shoulders. And we're just like, ah! And then we turned. And then coming at us was like a wall of state troopers. And I grabbed this guy by the shoulder. And I went, break off! And I threw him. And like, never saw the guy again. And neither one of us got arrested. And like, you know, then they showed the... You know, that we brought down the goalposts and stuff. And uh, when I got home, I walk in the door and see the colonel, my dad, and he goes, hey, saw you on television. And I was like, really? And I was like, so excited. And he goes, yeah, well, they showed that, <laughs> that riot going on. I figured you were there, so I saw you. And I was like, oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, anything, if it was Bills related, it was, you know. I, I actually say. But going back to. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I was actually going to say that, like. All three of us all, talked at the same time. I, I'll watch football. At any time, like I, 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 uh, and if I literally sometimes it's like, 
Oh, God, do I have to watch these two garbage teams lose to each other at the same time? Really, do I have to watch this? <laughs> and uh, But I'll watch, you know. I just, I dig the sport. I dig a lot of the... um a lot of the planning that goes into it. And uh, I started getting into CFL uh, a while back. And I'll, you know, we don't get a lot of those games down here, but I can get a lot of the highlights and I'll watch CFL highlights. Just churn them out. I love them. So, yeah. So that was something I thought was uh, interesting about the GFL, right? They have three different tiers and other football leagues. And and it basically led to year round football. I thought the whole tiering system in the, in the way it's set up, you know, is really cool. And you know, it, 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 that that doesn't happen in real life, right? Like we, we don't have football year round. No, we don't. We We can't make it happen. You'll have a semi overlap between the CFL, which starts in the summertime. And then they end in like November, December, they end early because obviously the weather is so much colder, but um, you can watch, a lot of other sports all year round. You can watch like lacrosse or uh, you obviously can't watch soccer all year round. Yeah. Ult- but like there's a lot of sports. Ultimate that- Frisbee on the know. Ocho, you know. <laughs> on the Ocho. <laughs> but no, but here's the thing is that I think that what I was going back to about sports is that y- I will watch uh, AAA baseball. I will watch AAA baseball mainly because I had a AAA baseball team when I was growing up. But I will watch that before I watch an MLB game because those guys are fighting harder to get in the show. And, like, with some guys, you know, with a lot of NFL players, once they're on a team, all they want to do is win because they want to get to the promised land of that one game. But, like, with a lot of other sports uh, that you're constantly playing in, like, you know, these developmental leagues and divisional leagues, the NBA is like this with the Mm -hmm. G League. You know, there's a lot of other, like, minor league basketball teams. My hometown has one of those, and it's, like, those guys are constantly grinding out in order to get further up the food chain to, and I just, I appreciate watching those games a lot, even though, I mean, football is my main sport. Can I go back to what you said earlier about, uh, you know, just watching football? Uh, I, I'm not a football fan. Uh, I like my team and I, I don't, sometimes I'll watch other sports, uh, but because there's always that chance that the game will be crazier than anything anybody has ever written. Like if you script like something like just look at all the games that happened two weeks ago. The this playoffs. is dating oh, yeah. the podcast. Yeah. 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 The, the championship week. No, that's the championship, the divisional round. No, there was all the cha- four that games was the championship came down week. because let's be honest. That divisional round was, was, was crazy. <laughs> Some of those games yeah, were like you're legendary. Right. I mean the the Chiefs and and your your team. Yep, I mean I can't bills. believe what there were so many swings. How many uh, diff, different times did the the the, the lead change in like in like the end there was just, the last it was insane. three minutes in insane. overtime? Yeah, but also, stuff like that. If you would have scripted that, you, no one would have believed it. But that's that's kind of brings me back to uh, the Galactic Football League and how like to to like tell a story using sports. Uh, I, I don't know. I think it's uh, it, contextualizing it within a story. Sometimes sports stories are kind of cliche where it's always like, you know, you know, the team is going up against unbeatable odds. It's like a um, a bad news bear scenario right? where they overcome the odds. Or there's like another time where maybe they come close to losing like Rocky and they've learned a lesson or something. But um, yeah, it's not all little, it's it's not all little giants. I know what you're saying. It's not all, unfortunately, it's not all like, uh, (laughs) it's not all, uh, what is it? Uh, It's not all the ducks. Those yeah. duck movies. <laughs> oh man, that brings me back. But like, here is the thing: is that like they're um in if if you had said you know we'll never have games like this. What really started it was that Packer Seahawk game, and it was about five six years ago, and that game went back and forth at the very end, and in the end, uh, Packers lost. Like Seattle somehow pulled it out at the last second. They went to overtime. It was crazy. I was in a grocery store. Figured, well, you know, I'll catch the end of it when I get home. But then I was like, uh, buying groceries. I passed by a television in the grocery store, and there's a bunch mm-hmm. of guys, workers and shoppers, who have given up on whatever it is they were gonna do, <laughs> and they are like locked on this game, and they were so wrapped. And the game went back and forth right at the end. It was like a controversial catch in the end zone, and I thought, this is. It, it, that that was like the first one of those where it was like, man, when there's enough parity where there's so many good teams out there or there's enough talent right. and the technology gets better that we can, they can have tablets on the sideline. That was before tablets on the sideline where like, you know, they were doing stuff in real time and, you know, just. Stone and chisel. 
Yeah, it yeah. was like it was a lot of it was still a lot of like uh, dry erase markers on like you know plastic coated whiteboards, tail, white yeah. and plastic coated things. So like these guys, as the technology has gotten better, the game has gotten so much more interesting. And that's one of the things about GFL is that um, when you're following the story, they're having all these computer projections of, and like and they have screens which have highlights in them so that the players on the inside can see information. So they can see like, you know, yeah, like a little heads up display. Yeah, like it's a, definitely a HUD. And so they got like, you know, percentages of, of completions. And they also, the, the uniforms have all this technology. Like when they're in the off season, when they're doing metrics for, for athletes, they're wearing those in the game in the GFL. So they know mm-hmm. right away. I'm like, we need to pull this guy. He doesn't know it, but he's got a stress fracture in his leg. And, you know, or like, we got to put somebody in real fast or whatever. And um, that technology that's in the book is in another series that I'm just working on, um, the Sun Symbol series. And the creation of that suit is in the series that I'm working on. And then I know that it's going to come back because I've already directed the GFL books. So there's all this technology. I love it when it ties together like that. Yeah, but like going back to how those the games were so crazy is that, I mean, because we have the added level of science fiction where we... We are willing to go on the journey of how fast these players can be because they're aliens or like, you know, how strong they can be or whatever. The chances of the game switching and becoming uh, winning and losing being complete toss ups and the not blowouts at all, uh, which, you know, that's one of the interesting things about the storyline in the GFL is that there's so much information that the teams have that it really does become a chess match. And not just, you know, brute force on the, you know, uh, on the line of scrimmage. I think that's one thing that makes it a, it definitely appeals to a wider audience for that, right? Like it, it's not so full of just raw sports knowledge, you know, that, that someone who doesn't like 100, like, you know, a story filled with 100% of that isn't going to enjoy it. I mean, one of the things I, I started listening to it in preparation, you know, for this podcast and, I was supposed to listen to the first one and the last one, so I knew the story, and, and and I found that I enjoyed it, and so I've just been listening to them in order. I think I'm halfway through the third mm-hmm. one now, and one of the things that you know keeps me in it is that it's a healthy mix. Yeah, we're getting what's Wait, on why the you, field. You, Dave's and off the cutting field. me off. I'm getting the the, <laughs> the cutoff symbol. I I just I I would have loved to listen to the whole thing. I just started the rookie, um, but I didn't have time to listen to all three. Go, God, go through, get to the third book. Um, we just started doing our research, I think, last week. So that's just, that's me. I had a, I had a long car ride in there, though. I, I went to Morgantown and back. So I, I think I killed like one and a half of the books just on that car well, it's ride. Interesting. Those, <laughs> those, those storylines, they have like a whole other, you get all the off-field stuff. You know, you get all the stuff of not just like how they treat each other like aliens and humans and uh, the elements of racism, but also like there's corruption, there's politics, and there's stuff that's that you know where you you get reminded that it's bigger than a game but then the game is emblematic of their all of their complete you know of their group continual struggle to become better people and so like there's all this you know struggle and whether or not you win you lose you know uh, it's not life or death but in some instances for a lot of people these choices that they make you know they, they factor out in a larger way to how they live their lives and how they succeed as people. And so, and also with the, with the criminal element, there is life and death struggle. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. I was just thinking the other day about how some of the characters in the sun symbol series then interact with characters. I know we're coming 800 plus years in the future and like how much, and now looking back, I'm like, Oh, that one character, that joke would have been funnier had I known about this other moment here so that I probably would have given the director or one of the actors a different direction. I mean, it still works, but yeah, it, it's, it's interesting to see how, like how far it's, uh, it expands. Well, what I want to know, can I, can I ask, I've been dying to ask. We all want to know. All right. Is there something for the ladies? Is there a little oh, romance in there too? Yeah. Well, it's, I, I guess there is, there is a romantic element, but the women who are fans like Sigler fans, uh, he has like mm-hmm. this, he has a, um, or he had had, I don't know about since the shutdown, but he has um, a convention for all of his fans who love his books. And they show up in, uh, usually in Las Vegas and sometime in October. And he doesn't, it's not like a, a, you know, a book signing where he like, you know, they don't, you know, bring a bunch of stuff. And he, signs. he hangs out with people 
and they go bowling and karaoke and they have fun. They go out drinking, they eat dinner. And these people show up for the first event of the, uh, of the convention and they're men and women all dressed up as characters from the books and not just GFL books, but all of his books. So there was this woman. Like the dinosaur writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, those, I saw that. Yeah, and there was one woman who showed up as uh, one of the coaches, the coach of the main character's team. And so that guy's like a little, like, you know, he's like a crab dude with one eye. And so this woman had this whole costume. <laughs> and then you see this other woman. She's dressed up as one of the quarterbacks, and she's got blue skin. And, and, and like, they're just, they love it. And um, there are a lot of, all of the uh, wide receivers uh, in the GFL, um, they are the female of their species uh, because they're faster. So all of the wide receivers um, are women. And so there's... Mm-hmm. It's women on women. Yeah, it's... Woman on woman coverage. Yeah, so there's women... On, it's, not, it's no longer man to man. Yeah, it's no longer man to man. It's women, uh, woman to woman coverage. Um, unless some of the linebackers who are men and some can be women uh, will drop back into coverage. Well, then it's, you know... Then they're coming across and it's like... Yeah. Now we're just split. Now we're just and then, splitting And then it's hairs. a hospital pass. Like, we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Someone's going down. There's going to be a flag somewhere. But, um... But yeah, so oh, I, I love that too. I, I don't want to give away too much, but the whole the this week, one death to report. I thought that <laughs> cracked me up. I know it's morbid, but I thought that was hilarious. No, there was um it's funny because that in the book is just written as uh like a news article that's like just stats. And um it 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 when you're reading it, it makes total sense. It's like, oh, I'm reading a newspaper article about this thing. But when you're listening to it in the ear, it sounds kind of flat, like who is this person? Who is talking? You know, why are we listening to this list of things? And so um, I rearranged it to have it be two of the um, uh, sports journalists who are in the book have a TV show or like a radio show, kind of like Pardon the Interruption uh, uh, with Kornheiser and Wilbon. And so these two characters then go through and do recaps of all the games. So instead of reading it like... like um, you know, there were this many first downs, this many things. I'll put together a small, like, you know, I'll add all that stuff and put it into a speech that this one uh, sports journalist says. And so they have, the, so they become characters. So you're actually watching a show or like the idea that you're listening to a show while inside of listening to a, a graphic audio product. And so, and yeah. it was fun as daylights to put that together. And like Scott was like, when I talked about it, he was like, do that thing with like the TV show. It was hilarious. You know, it was the kind of thing of like, you're actually hearing something else. Yeah. And so there was also some Easter eggs of like putting in, um, the, he mentioned, Scott mentioned certain things in the book, like things that people drink or eat or whatever. And so I wrote minor commercials for those products that Scott came up with that play in the radio show while you're listening to the book about the sport. So it was like this thing of like writing commercial, uh, you know, gags and jokes and stuff and commercials and ad copy. It was fun. So the series isn't over, correct? Right? No, no, no. There's new. There's more coming? Yeah. It's, there's so much that happens between um, book one and book five. The, but there's definitely going to be another book coming out, coming out soon. He's still working on it. Uh, Those, the one with the dragons thing or the dinosaurs, he has a whole bunch of shorts, like short stories that are kind of like off the main story, like little spinoffs. But the main GFL storyline's got another edition coming up pretty soon. Oh, cool. I better finish them up. It's going to be fun to come back to it. It's been a long time since we've, I have to get a lot of those actors back together. Like, get got to get the team back together. Gang is back in town. I got to bleep that out, too. Uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> That's copyright. That's copyright. I mean, <laughs> no, it sounds just like the four, record, so. <laughs> if it's more than four notes, you're good, dude. I think if you, I think you're okay as long as you're more than, more than four notes. Uh, and before you go, MJ, do you do any LARPing? Uh, no. I think, um... I think football gear is pretty much like, you know, fan gear is pretty much all my LARPing. I'm not going to like, I'm not going to have a computer like superimpose like a tricorn hat on my head or nothing, but I mean. Yeah, that'd be crazy. I'm just, yeah, you're just going to go jump into a table. <laughs> no, I'm thinking uh, of a, I'm going to jump on a table. Right? Yeah. Whether or not the table's on fire, I have no idea. That's kind of an, uh, that's kind of a, you know. Well, it better be or else. Oh, or the it's coin attack. There. Well, why do you ask about the LARPing? Is that your thing? Yeah. Or is it because of the mustache? It's just like, I am just ready to like get on a horse and go lance something. I don't know. Is that a proper way of saying it? Am I going to go lance something? You go it, lance something. Awkward. Yeah, you, you do look yes. like you're, if we made your screenshot like uh, black and white, you would look like the like you're a Civil War reenactment uh, <laughs> person. And we could say the, the reports of MJ's demise have been greatly exaggerated. Yeah, I'll be drinking like someone's about to cut off my leg. That's what's going to happen. 
Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks guys for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot, MJ. Take care. Hey, everyone. It's Dave from Dave and Dave. Thanks so much for listening. We have a lot of awesome shows lined up for you guys, so make sure you follow us on Twitter at Graphic Audio. And if you're on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to get the latest episodes. This month, we're giving away a free copy of GFL to one lucky listener. All you have to do is leave a comment or mention at Graphic Audio on Twitter with the letters GFL and let us know what you liked about this month's episode. We'll be announcing the winner in our next episode, and we have tons of GA swag and books to give away, so make sure you stay tuned. We're also running 60% off the entire GFL series until Wednesday, February 16th, and you can find that at www.graphicaudio.net forward slash Dave2. That's Dave and the number two. Thanks again for listening.